Welcome back to the Fort Johnson podcast, where we bring you updates on the activities in the community, issues at hand, and some helpful tips for our entire Fort Johnson family. I'm your host, and today we'll be taking on a subject close to all our hearts this time of year, Thanksgiving cooking safety. For the holidays are a great time for family and friends to come over, but Thanksgiving is among the top days of the year for kitchen-related accidents. From frying turkeys to handling raw ingredients, it's so easy to get things terribly wrong if the right precautions aren't taken. Today, we'll be diving into tips to keep your kitchen safe and your Thanksgiving celebration enjoyable for everybody. So, have a seat, or if you're cooking, keep those earbuds in and your eyes on the stove, and let's make this give Thanksgiving a one to remember for all the right reasons. <laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you are watching our podcast, I am Jeff England from the Fort Johnson Podcast Studios, uh, coming to you live kind of on tape, uh, maybe from a couple days ago, who knows. <laughs> but today, we have a very special guest with us, returning for his umpteenth season uh, on, his, on our podcast. Uh, we've got Alex Rivera. How are you doing, Alex? I'm doing pretty good. How's the fire department over there? Um, yeah, uh, just adding more work to me, more a lot of different things, and uh, I guess because I'm getting more comfortable talking to you and talking to this microphone and to the people there at home, <laughs> they're gonna start sending me here more often. Yeah, I have a feeling that it's, I see you a lot over here. It's uh, but um, the, this time of year is uh, getting pretty uh, intense, isn't it? It's uh, you've got you've got Thanksgiving, you got Christmas, and you've got New Year's. I mean, through those three holidays alone, you've got all kinds of uh, fire hazards and, oh, yeah. and cooking. So I mean, I'm sure you'll get a couple of calls once. Yeah, or twice. Yeah, if it isn't if it isn't uh, space heaters uh, with blankets over them or Christmas trees with uh, like dried Christmas trees in the house, you know it could be like, it could be even um, one thing that nobody ever thinks about is if there's a power outage or something and you have one of those portable generators. A lot of people <laughs> try putting them up in the garage, and they uh, <laughs> the carbon monoxide builds up, and you don't don't do it in the garage, okay? <laughs> Yeah, that's not a good idea. <laughs> no, no, no. So, <laughs> so Thanksgiving is, uh, well, it should be right around the time this comes out. So uh, a lot of people around here, of course, they're going to be cooking a lot in the kitchen. And uh, if, you, if you're really brave and really good and uh, you could be deep frying turkeys out in the, out in the yard, hopefully uh, on a flat, non-flammable surface, like maybe a, a driveway or something. Yeah, a lot of people are. Um, they have. Uh, they're either one of two things. They're either they they would love to have a deep fried turkey, but they're they're too like timid to to try it, or they would love to have a deep fried turkey and think it's nothing to it and just go right at it. That, that both both sides are, are are not a good idea. But it is it is a great way, a quick way to to kind of cook uh, a turkey, or a quicker way than I'm used to. But uh, there's some steps and some safety things that we should take in, uh, take in consideration when it comes to it. But once you take those steps in consideration and do and do these things right, you shouldn't have any problem with uh, deep fried turkey. Yeah, I did. Uh, you know, I, I'm one of those people that just said, I'm going to go for it. And uh, luckily, I wasn't cooking for anybody in particular or anything. But it, it turned out the first one, you know, I followed all the the. St- steps and all the rules and made sure it was dry and, and seasoned it properly. I did a really good one, uh, found some really good uh, injections to do and uh, did everything the way it's supposed to and uh, didn't have much of a problem at all. I mean, I had some overflow or spill, but that was because of the boil up and um, but it didn't hit the flame or didn't go up in flames and stuff. It, it, and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that's pretty. That, those are those are pretty good. Those are things that we look for. Uh, some of the tips that they tell you is uh, there's always like a little example that comes with like on the on the on the plastic of the of the turkey. But the best thing, the the easiest way to get it is through your own data, the own data that you collect. Meaning, you take your turkey once it's thawed and everything, and it's ready. Uh, put it in the in the pot that you're gonna cook it in. Fill it up with water. Up into that, up to that, um, that fill line, 
on yeah, that, make on sure that, well, that make thing. sure that it, the uh, the turkey is completely submersed, yep. so the, and then the, mark it on the inside yep. of the tank. Yep, you mark you can mark it on the inside of the tank or or eyeball it, whatever you need to do. But that's the best way to do it. And then once you um, pour it out, then that's that's and once you take the turkey out, that's when you know your your uh, oil level. Granted, oil and water they may look the same, but the one thing that we know and we understand in the side of fire science is the water is a lot more dense than uh, than oil. And that's w one of the big issues why these explosions happen. It's because of the density of, of, of the two. So when uh, when you see these those videos on YouTube where they have they drop a, a frozen turkey inside of a, a, a pot of hot grease, it, the, the, the best example I can give you is that that frozen ice is introducing into the high intense heat and it's completely changing in its phase of state. So it's going straight from um, solid past liquid and going into steam. But it's still, as a, as a liquid, it's, it's more dense, it's heavier than oil, so it's gonna go straight to the bottom and it's gonna expand out from the bottom, pushing that surface, pushing that oil up, and that's where the, you see the big eruption. Ah. And that, but it comes out violently. So if the, if the flames from the oils touching the fire is not gonna is not gonna get you, that hot grease will if you're not careful and you and you don't uh, take these precautions. That's why we push strongly that if you're gonna do this, <clears throat> even if you thawed your turkey outright, did all the steps that I've told you right now, as well as the steps that they tell you in safety, still uh, cook it outside, not inside your home. Don't don't deep fry turkey inside your home. Never. Well, unless you've got the uh, the the butterball indoor turkey fryer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, that and, one's pretty cool. And the butterball indoor <laughs> turkey fryer has a control lid. Yeah. So there's things like that. But uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, these the uh, these uh, open flame propane uh, turkey fryers, you want to still do that on the outside, preferably not with a roof over. Granted, <clears throat> let me rephrase. Um, you you want to do it outside. But you want to make sure that, you're, that there's it's not raining. Yeah, nothing that, flammable not, around. Well, not just nothing flammable. No, no water droplets. The reason why I say this is because, uh, say, uh, we've had we've had we've had one guy. He's he was complaining because he did everything right. He's not from here. He's from the north. He was a soldier. We we responded to one of his calls, and it was because he was deep frying his turkey while well, it was outside in the rain, and he went over and he went over to check on it. And when he opened that lid, it was it was it, the downpour came in and it just started sprouting all over the place. Basically, oh, imagine make, yeah, no. imagine cooking bacon and just sprinkling water into a pan. Not oh, a good thanks. idea. Yeah, that's what. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. Uh, don't 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 fry bacon naked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, water and oil. The best thing to say, water and oil doesn't mix, and it's not. It's it's because they're they don't they don't bind well. You know. Yeah. Uh, they don't bind well, so they're going to push each other away, and that's where the that's where it becomes violent. Yeah, and the uh, yeah the <laughs> rain that, that's a big one. Also, uh, make sure that when you're on uh, on your driveway that you sweep away all the leaves and, and anything that's uh, dead grass or yeah. <clears throat> anything Any, like that. Anything they can they they can cause anything to fire. To, yeah, that's to not going to be fun. You don't you don't want to <laughs> do that. No, and and it will stain your your driveway if it if it <laughs> ruptures over. Uh, believe me, it will stay in your driveway. <laughs> now, I do have some I, in the kitchen. Now, if you're cooking in the kitchen, um, one of the problems that I've had before is, you know, you cook something that's that gets real smoky, whether you're burning it or you're uh, or it's just a, a, a low smoke point uh, oil or something like that. And it's and it sets off your smoke alarm. What is the. I've seen people go from, you know, tearing the thing off the, the ceiling because you can't turn it off to uh, taking the battery out and then more than likely forgetting to put it back in. Uh, but what's the best way to stop the, uh, the smoke alarm from going off if, you're, if there's no problem, no, it's just smoky? If it, uh, the, the best thing to do for, like, if your smoke alarm is going off and it's just smoky and you have a control, you have the, the situation under control, 
is to ventilate the room. Obviously, you're gonna it's gonna deal with the whole alarm system going off. I wouldn't advise anybody to remove any batteries or uh, put a cap over it or anything like that. Or like I've seen p- people put rubber gloves over the over the smoke detector. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> you know, I probably shouldn't have said that yeah. because now <laughs> don't don't do that. Don't do that. We'll find out. But anyways. So can you talk? I can just imagine seeing, uh, seeing yeah. a glove. Yeah, like every now, 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 everybody, we're gonna go to the barracks, and everybody's gonna have rubber gloves on there because of me. I'm sorry, chief. It's all your fault. I'm sorry, chief. But anyways, so yeah, the the best thing is just is is fresh air, fresh air ventilation. Yeah, so, I I had one go off uh, when I was uh, it had I cooked something, and I don't know if I burnt it or if it just got smoky or not, but. Um, when I noticed how it went off, it was it's like a little laser uh, diode in there that it, when the laser is broken, uh, it just sets off the alarm. So I went in there and all I did is blow the uh, the whole thing out yeah. and and it turned off. Yeah, that's and what, that gave me a chance to ventilate the whole kitchen. So yeah, that was what, nice. what, what what we usually what we do when we respond, just like I would do at my own home, is if uh, if it's in my kitchen, then I close. Um, I close the doors in my kitchen. I open up uh, one window and then I crack open one of my doors and put a fan there. And basically, what I do is I pressurize ah. that little area to blow the main smoke out. But at the same time, I fan the the, the smoke detector. And eventually, uh, the particles that are there that, that keeps interrupting the uh, the that little your the radar the ion thing mm-hmm. uh, will eventually clear up. And then. It gives it. It has still has. It needs time. It has to have a certain amount of time for it to clear before it officially clears. Ah, I got you. But yeah, once it's done, it's, it'll clear up. Now the um, mm-hmm. if there's if a fire breaks <laughs> out, uh, there's I've seen the the fire extinguishers, which everyone everyone should have a fire extinguisher in their house someplace. Uh, preferably near the kitchen because that's where most of the things are going to go off. But um, I've noticed the letters on uh, the fire extinguishers. With uh, most of them are A B C, A B C maybe sometimes a D, but I don't I don't see that one very. I see the A B C. Sometimes Y. No, I'm <laughs> you know why. <laughs> but um, I know it's I before E, except after C. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the um, that the A B C the letters are usually um, uh, telling what kind of fire it could fight, right? Yeah. Well, the extinguishers that, that you see, the basic uh, extinguishers you see in normal people's homes or in the hallways and, and, bar- and the barracks or in these buildings are ABC extinguishers. And basically they're just, they're able, the A stands for, um, for uh, it, it fights organic material. And we, we say A for ash. Anything that, that produces an ash. Like wood uh, and paper. And- yeah. That, it, it, it'll be able to, it'll fight that fire. Uh, for B, is we go for we we use that we use that for boiling liquids or gas or any kind of fuels and yeah. that and that and that's where the B part stands for so it, it can it can uh, it can help fight a fire that's made from like uh, oil gasoline and or oil or a dirty rag or anything like that um, and the C part is for a current anything that produces a current any electric, electrical fires or anything like that it'll it'll produce that now what those those ABCs what they do they all work together in tandem for to 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 fight any kind uh, to fight their fires and all it's doing it's going to either um uh eliminate one of the three uh one of the four components of of the fire triangle or the fire to to, to exist whether it's either going to be the fuel oxygen or the ignition source and that's where the abc's the abc's kind of is a catch all to, to eliminate one of those three, gotcha. as well as the chain reaction. So it's so um, some of the old, or, well, one of the older fire uh, extinguishers that are that I haven't seen around lately, a halon, mm-hmm. uh, that would have been an ABC kind of thing. Well, uh, a halon is uh, what it, what it is. It, it um, displaces it, oxygen. Yes, that's, that's what that's what that's uh, uh, But the the only thing is, it does its job way too well. And when there's a halon leak inside of a, say, a, a, a crash truck or a, a one of the Humvees, if they have a halon extinguisher in there, and it has a leak, it can displace the oxygen. Uh, displace the oxygen. It can sip. It can seep into your blood and displace the oxygen. Ooh, that's not there. good. And that's where it starts to affect people. I gotcha. So it does its job way too well. 
<laughs> now so they, we don't do them. We don't have them anymore because there's a lot of health issues with it. Yeah, they had. They used to have those in the uh, the fighter jets and yeah. we, Halon and mm-hmm. and the big old big <clears throat> big extinguishers on the on the flight line was uh, was Halon, but apparently they thought it was destroying the ozone layer, which. I never understood because Halon's heavier than air. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean it. It uh, it's uh it it, it was a, a good use because it's cleaner, I guess, like uh like foam or um the, these powder uh, extinguishers. They they're they're dirtier. They oh they, you can save as much as you can for, of the of the property. One of one of the the two things that they always taught us in firefighting is uh, protect uh, is uh, uh, save lives, protect property. Yeah, the uh, have you ever seen one of those fire grenades? It was a fire extinguisher grenade. It was like a, a little glass ball, and you'd throw that into the fire, and it would help put out the fire. Yeah, the, oh, who was yeah. it? Um, those were like old, old school. Yeah, old school. We had um, uh, Roland. He was uh, he was one of our uh, training officers, and he collect a lot of stuff. Uh huh. Like he was the Sanford and Son of the fire department. Anyways, I digress. He um he had one of those in his office just sitting there and we were at we asked him, I was like, What is that? I was like, Oh, he explained it to us. I was like, Why don't you teach this or tell you're a training officer? They don't like, make them anymore. He's like, Well, they don't make them anymore. And I, I mean, I mean, we can talk about it. I was like, you could do it as a history thing. So he did, he explained it to us and everything. It was pretty cool. Yeah, that is. And I think Chief uh, our old fire chief, Chief Cook. His house is like a museum. He has all these old school stuff. Yeah, Chief Cook is really cool. I like him. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I bother him too much because it's like, hey, 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 how's it going? What about this? <laughs> no, but no, <laughs> he's got he, he's everywhere. I saw I just saw him the other day driving down the street. Oh yeah, yeah, he's still cool. Um, so the uh, we got and okay, so if you're in the if, if we're in the kitchen and uh, and a fire breaks out, uh, definitely there's certain things that you want to do and you don't want to do, uh, and it all depends on what's caught fire. Um, if you're roasting a, a turkey in the oven and it catches fire, uh, what's the best thing to do? The best thing to do is to not open the oven. That's one thing, because you're, you're just going to be introducing more oxygen into it. So leave the oven closed, uh, and, uh, and the next thing you do is eliminate the... Igni- the ignition source. So turn off the oven. So, yeah. So if you look, if you think about that triangle that we talk about with the fire, the fire touch adhesion triangle, you're gonna you're gonna not introduce any more oxygen. So you're gonna eliminate the the oxygen part, and then you're gonna turn off the stove or the oven, which eliminates the the ignition part. And the only thing that's left is the fuel, which is the turkey that's burning. But eventually it'll go out because the two other elements are gone. Yeah. So there. So the oven is airtight, huh? It, it Somewhat. is. It is oxygen. Uh, uh, fire needs about twice as much oxygen as it puts out in carbon. So, oh, wow. uh, so when when you close it, it's gonna basically breathe itself out. Now the uh, now if it's on a stove top, um, well you can't you, you can't set water on fire uh, without a really good source. <laughs> you have to separate the the elements. Uh, it's because it's oxygen and hydrogen. Yeah, uh, but. <laughs> Which is actually kind of interesting. Oxygen is flammable. Hydrogen is flammable. But you put them together, and they're not flammable. Well, because well, when you have uh, when you have twice as much hydrogen as you do have oxygen, it creates a dense con- uh, material, which is water. Yeah, and which fights it. fire. Okay. Anyway, so you can't, so you don't have to worry about uh, the green beans going up in flames. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so if, you have it, if you have it on the stove, basically if you have a stove uh, fire and as, like say your uh, bacon grease is yeah, fire bacon, or yeah. anything like that or what we have all the time, best thing to do is to, if you have a lid, to cover it, you know? Ah. If you have, if you have a, your, one of your kitchen extinguishers, to uh, you can use one of the kitchen extinguisher. It is it is it is designed for it. You know, the, with the powder and stuff like that. The, it, it, you're, what you don't want to do is rush right into the center and just spray it right in. Yeah, it's going to push a lot of it out and make a huge mess. I mean, it was, uh, it yeah. will uh, it will put out uh, the fire because it, it's a clumping agent. So, but um, but the the best thing I always tell people if it's if it's if it's in that source in that area, it hasn't spread to like the walls or the yeah. stove. Then uh, if you if you if you feel comfortable, just cover it up. Eventually, it will eliminate the oxygen and it can't breathe anymore. the The heat source is still there and it's still hot. It's still hot enough to reignite if you 
introduce oxygen again to it. So once you cover it, leave it covered. Even if you think it's out, leave it covered and call us if you need to, and we'll come by and check it out. Now, uh, what about, um, I've seen the commercials for the uh, fire blankets. You pull it out of the little envelope and poosh, put it just lay it down on top of the fire. That, that does the same thing as putting a lid on it, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's eliminating, it's doing the, eliminating the oxygen of it. Um, it's, um, uh, it's, it's rated for a, a certain temperature, so it, it's able to take that heat that that, that, that that pan is probably pushing out, but with the oxygen uh, removed from it, it's eventually going to uh, calm it down, but it doesn't calm it down as fast as it would as a lid or extinguisher because it's conde- it's holding in that heat there. Yeah. <laughs> so now the uh, so uh, oh and the other thing that I would say is uh, yeah if you're if you get an oil fire or grease fire in your kitchen, don't try moving it. Uh, that that stuff will just slosh all over the place, and it could slosh on you. Now you're on fire with oil, <laughs> and it's getting all over the place. Yeah, the 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 best trick, or not the best trick, but the best thing I've always what we always try to teach when we have the trailer out there and everything is um is you can put things over, you can put things on to stop it, but don't try to remove it. Yeah, trying to remove it can just put you into some serious uh, danger. And stuff like that, and a lot of people do that. They'll have, they'll, they'll see it, and they'll get it, and they'll grab it and just shove it right into the sink, you know? Oops. For uh, <laughs> to try to protect their stove or protect something. Well, really, the best thing to do, the safest bet, is to just cover it. It's just to cover it up, or and find it, and or put it out with the extinguisher. But one of the things that we've always also tell people about their extinguishers, their kitchen extinguishers, is put it within eye level. A lot of people put it. Oh, so you can see it. A lot of people put it under their sink or uh, on the bottom of uh, of the bottom shelves of it. And the one thing you don't want, if there's a fire rolling in the in your kitchen, is having to go under anything. Yeah, look and look for it or forget about it and stuff like that. You want to keep it at eye level so you can just grab it, turn, uh, do your uh, do your ditty, which is pass, pull, aim, squeeze, sweep, put it out. Now there, now uh, there gone over a lot of fire problems um and you know uh, the majority of people go through thanksgiving all the holidays without any kind of uh, fire issues or problems but there's other things that can that can cause damage uh like if you are boiling the uh, green beans or the potatoes and um uh, and that handle is over it's not put away it's Mm -hmm. over the uh it's out in the walkway and you have children in the house or something they'll reach up and grab that so uh that can cause uh scalding and and burns that way and stuff uh if somebody gets if somebody gets uh scalded or burned like that what what do you recommend first thing well for um uh what we what we usually do is no matter how whether whether it's uh what's a superficial burn or um like blistering or anything like that, always call 911. Call us. Come, we'll come out, or the uh, the med units will come out. If you have a burn, if you have a burn kit, uh, um, get it. Uh, the one thing, the one thing you want to do is stay calm. Make sure that uh, that uh, you're not making it worse, or are trying to like uh, coated in butter. Or, well, <laughs> well, no, or trying to like. Uh, um, like it, it, oh, if it's rub start, it. If, yeah, rub. If it's starting to blister already, don't try to uh, clean off any of the stuff. If it's just like, uh, if it's just, if it's superficial, just red. And at that at that moment, just uh, you you want to clean it off. But we uh, like in my house, I have a bottle of uh, aloe in my in the fridge. I always have a bottle of aloe. It's because I'm accident prone. I burn myself all the time. I like cooking bacon with no shirt on. You know, so <laughs> it, it, it is what it is. But uh, but no, but. Uh, but we have that. We have those things. Um, but the the one the one main thing we try to we try to tell people is to um, uh, call us for for help and stuff to make sure that it, things don't escalate any worse. Yeah, and uh, I would I would recommend putting ice on it immediately. To stop it from cooking because mm-hmm. uh, that's when because 
you know, I've, I've gotten into grilling and barbecuing mm-hmm. lately, and uh, the things that I've learned is once you take a steak off the grill, it's still cooking on mm-hmm. the inside. It'll, it'll still, the temperature will still raise. So put some ice on it, get it, get it co- cooled down, especially if you got aloe in the refrigerator. Yeah. That's not only going to help with everything else, but it's also mm-hmm. cold, and that'll help cool it down. Oh, yeah. So uh, overall, uh, so we've got Thanksgiving. And those are turkeys and hams and, and delicious foods and everything. And uh, after that, we've got uh, Christmas. Uh, we got Christmas coming up. So oh, yeah. um, there's some problem. There's different problems with Christmas. We got all the same cooking problems, but now we're introducing more electrical uh, uh, problems on the inside of the house oh, uh, with trees. And, and now we're introducing trees that a lot of people don't. Um, water properly so they dry out which just makes it a nice big old tinder box inside your living room um how many how bad is a uh, problem like you know you've got uh let's just say an electrical short because you plug too many things into one electrical outlet <laughs> yeah you watch the, the what is the national lamp <laughs> yeah, christmas christmas vacation yeah, yeah. national Lampoon's christmas vacation is a great example we, I've, i think i've watched that those clips Tons of times on on training videos and stuff like that. Whenever we teach our new firefighters and whenever we teach in a, and as our fire safety classes for some of the uh, uh, people with housing and CDCs, one thing is understanding. When, when I uh, when I grew up and under started understanding uh, circuitry, basically the watts and stuff, uh, I started learning that um, that uh, putting uh, uh, your whole house lights. Like my dad would put all the lights around the house onto a uh, one of those green exten- extension cords, uh-huh. and then just plugging it straight in, which which is supposed to be for like indoors, and it's like a low <laughs> duty uh, thing. It's and it's it's always bad. Uh, let's see, um, uh, curling your wires. It's that's that's bad too. A lot of people would just they kind of bundle their wires yeah, together big and old, shove them. Big old and rat's nest. Yeah. Up. The bad the bad thing about that is that 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 current is constantly flowing through there, and you know with with electricity and everything that's it's going to generate with with motion it generates heat. I mean heat is going to continue to generate heat. That's where a lot of times we get a lot of those the heat issues. Another thing is like you were saying with with people overstacking or daisy chaining. Or you'll see uh, like uh, the tree, the TV, the, exten- the extension cords, all the com- all the Christmas lights and everything into two ports for the whole house. The whole house. <laughs> so that's always bad too. So it's just things like that that uh, just uh, understanding the little concerns like that and and not overpower, not over um, extending the the voltage and the watts of, of a certain outlet that you're using yeah probably a good idea now the uh, a couple of uh, <laughs> a quick tips on this also to keep an eye out for that is make sure if you have a live tree uh make sure that you water it keep it very hydrated those things drink a lot of water uh. and you're going to have it in your house for quite a while and your pets you want to make sure that uh, you keep your pets away from the chewing on the wires or uh, knocking over the the things and uh, don't be old fashioned and put candles in your tree yeah. <laughs> That's, that's what happened before lights and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, it was great. I watched, I watched like uh, like the like the Who cartoons and uh-huh. stuff, and they'll have the the thing. I'm like, oh. And, and as a kid, I thought that was awesome. As a grown up, and and as a as a 20 years as a firefighter, I'm like, that's a bad idea. Bad idea. Bad, bad idea. idea. <laughs> and then and then the the cats and and the animals and stuff. And the one thing that I've never had it like a live tree in my house. It's not that I I wouldn't want one. I mean, I I want one just for the nostalgia of it, mm-hmm. you know. But uh, but uh, my mother never had one. Yeah, it makes like the house that. smell good too. Yeah, I would I would I would think so. But I I think it was, I always thought that that was like rich people stuff, you know. <laughs> but they're not. I I've spent more money on my fake trees than I would have spent on these on 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 a real tree. Yeah. And, and I explained that to my wife, but she's so like old fashioned Puerto Rican. You know that she she's like no no we're just gonna go up in the attic and get I was like, I was like no not we me not we me let's let's say that right <laughs> so we end up doing that but we do have uh, we do have issues with uh, dried up trees and stuff like that and people not you know being considerate about those things or understanding 
the, the safety issues with it. And with the electrical stuff today, like uh, lithium batteries, oh, and geez. floating, yeah. things like that with the, with the um, what do you call it, the hovers, uh, the hover wheels. Oh, the hoverboards, yeah. Hoverboards, the hover wheels, yeah. oh my God. Recharging, so they don't stop charging, yeah. they just get hotter and hotter. Yeah. And then finally, um, you know, one last thing before we go. Uh, Fireworks for uh, the for the um, uh, for New Year's for New Year's yeah, yeah. Uh, be safe don't blow your hands off <laughs> yeah I mean I mean understand the the especially here the rules on base and stuff we we can't we, it's not like we can give uh, hot work permits for fireworks exactly right? yeah, and always have a bucket near a bucket of water nearby mm -hmm. and and have nine one one on speed dial <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. I mean I, I'm not telling you to go and shoot off fireworks here on base because you can't do that. But if you're gonna do anything off base, off base or anything, uh, just uh, uh, be safe and and uh, understand how uh, the the safe distances, all of them, all the safety precautions on those on the fireworks have a safe distance uh, uh, little warning on them, and just abide to those things. Yeah, at, at, and then always have like like uh, an extinguisher or something, and somebody around that's not doing anything. Alex, I appreciate you coming in and uh, again, and uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have you back here again soon. Uh, so I hope, uh, well, you're getting, you're getting more used to being in here. So I'm getting better, more comfortable. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, well, we had a great time uh, having you here and uh, I have a great time uh, sending this out to everybody. Please, if you have any, um, ideas or uh, opportunities that you would like to see on our show, please <laughs> come in. Uh, give us a call or uh, leave us a comment down on the, uh, in the comment section and be sure to subscribe, uh, make a comment, like it, give it a thumbs up, and uh, we'll be listening and watching at you later. That was easy.